Hello there, welcome to episode 10. The film I'm going to show you today is a particular favourite of mine. I really wanted it to be featured in the first episode, but I didn't have a digital copy of it available, so it had to wait. Still, better late than never, eh? Let's take a look. It's the Japanese film Otenki Onesan, The Weather Woman. This was the first Japanese film I saw all the way through, and of course it introduced me to model-turned-actress Kei Mizutani, who attained cult status for her role as Keiko, the title character, and who has since had roles in no less than 40 films. The film is based on a manga series by Tetsu Adachi, published in eight volumes between September 1992 and August 1994, so it seems like they didn't have the entire manga material to draw from when making it. There's a lot of stuff in it that isn't in the actual manga as well, so I won't waste time comparing the two, as after the initial premise they both start to go their separate ways. Despite the wealth of source material though, the runtime is quite short, only 85 minutes. In Japan, the film was a direct-to-video release in 1993, but after screening at some international film festivals, it was given theatrical release in 1996. SBS showed it in early 1998, which is when I first saw it. The director of this film won Tomoaki Hosoyama made his name with a number of pink movies, what they call adult films in Japan, with such titles as Sumo Wrestling Girls, Family Hooker, Lesbian Harem, Dirty Girl, Chaotic Love, and of course Kyonyu, English title Big Milk Secreting, about his experiences in the porn industry. It's said that you'll see the opening scenes of 1,000 movies in your life, but you'll only remember three. For most people, this will be one of them. Or maybe I just partially made that up. The Weather Woman opens with a climax. Ha! <laughs> Schoolgirl Keiko is loudly masturbating on top of a building. As you do, if you're Robert Hughes. Her classmate Yamagishi looks on in awe and she's not interested at his declarations of love. She instead tells him to prove it by jumping off the building, which of course he can't, so she does, leaping over the edge with her telekinetic powers. Years later, Yamagishi is working in a burger joint and not having much luck with the opposite persons of the contradictory gender. But Keiko has made it to the world of television, in the studios of JTV. When we next see her, she's getting off again. Perhaps she's excited at the news that she's been asked to stand in to do the weather report for one night on the 9pm news. Just one chance to make an impact on national TV. Five minutes of fame, and Keiko's gonna take hold of it, uh, figuratively. How exactly will she exploit this brief window of nationwide exposure? That night, Yamagishi's watching the news in a noodle house when he sees his high school crush on TV. And then Keiko lifts her skirt and shows her underwear to conclude the weather report. The respectable viewing public are stunned. There is shock, outrage, confusion, slight wood, and a media frenzy as the papers demand to know whose panties they just saw. Keiko's response is simple. She pleasures herself again. At least she's doing it in private now. Keiko convinces the bigwigs that her skirt-lifting antics are the ratings boost the station desperately needs. And the station owner agrees, so Keiko becomes a nighttime sensation. Note the use of the manga books in this scene. Yamagishi by this stage has become a sort of general dog's body at JTV. Recently ousted former weather reporter Michiko is crestfallen to find herself almost literally yesterday's news. Her only recourse is to beg for any crummy job she can get. Meanwhile in Paris, the station owner's daughter Kaori hears about the controversy and decides to head to Tokyo. 
When she arrives in Japan, a handy visual cue is provided to show she has French experience. The breadstick. And I only noticed this after I'd seen the movie a few times, but someone is holding a breadstick in every scene Kaori appears in. You have to admire Hosoyama's consistency. Meanwhile, poor Michiko is relegated to the schlock end of the schedule, hosting a show where she goes out meeting perverts. I suppose the nightly news is all JTV has going for it. Naively, she doesn't seem to know much about enemas, even though she gives herself one in the manga. So she forgets to stand back when this guy has one and has to return to the TV station reeking of... well, you know. Kaori makes her Keiko's personal maid. She wants inside info. So Michiko finds a maid costume and sets about her menial duties. But Keiko would rather she dress like this. And perform duties like this. Hey kids, not till you're 18. These bathroom shenanigans are recorded by Kaori's hidden camera and accidentally on purpose aired during Keiko's segment. Having already been lectured by the board, Keiko now finds herself out of a job. Notice that the VT operator, who is Kaori's accomplice in this scene, is wearing the badge on his arm that says Adachi Tetsu Sensei. This might be a cameo by Tetsu Adachi himself, but I've never seen a single photo of him, so I wouldn't know. Now Kaori is free to become the new weather woman and lend JTV some class. Her viewers are not so much captivated as under hypnosis. While Keiko is in the woods getting whipped by Yamagishi as some sort of weather woman training, Kaori is planning an over-the-top special, which Keiko interrupts live on the air, and it's game on as the two of them battle it out in the forest. Who will emerge victorious? Will an overseas education and intellectual savoir-faire win out over panty flashing, sexual indiscretions and BDSM? Well, watch some TV yourself. When has it ever? With this film, we have a main character who is driven by greed and a desire for fame and is ruthless and egomaniacal. This is contrasted with the simpering Michiko, who never stands up for herself. Neither does Yamagishi, one of the few characters with any sort of moral compass. Both of them are willing to debase themselves for just a hint of approval from their oppressors. Overall, this is a sexploitation film with such overblown conceits you can't help but be entertained. Perhaps there's a lesson to be learned here in the way the media creates insta-celebs, with Japanese society collectively hopping on their bandwagon before the trend quickly dies, the personality's downfall duly forgotten and the masses move on to the next flavour of the month. Or perhaps the lesson is, never take a day off work. If you get the chance and you like Japanese films, see this movie. If you don't like them, See it anyway. I guarantee you won't see anything else like it.